Hello, it's me again. This is a, uh, a surprising little case which caught me out um, last week. Um, I had no idea that this tooth was perforated. Um, and this was a, a referral that was sent to me um, uh, from a dentist who could not find the uh, canals, or they thought they might have found the canals. So I obviously got the patient in for the consult and I just decided to take out the temporary filling here and in this case it looks like it's been dressed with Ledimix and then I used a ultrasonic device and instantly I felt the ultrasonic tip dip into something quite spongy I thought hmm this is a bit unusual so I am just giving the access cavity a good old clean out here and straight away you can see right there there's quite a large perforation in the distal aspect and I took a x-ray just to see if the, uh, the the perforation was obvious it wasn't but I can see here in the two red lines this is essentially where the perforation has occurred so it's at this point I'm thinking to myself well I have just got to visualize where this is you know can I repair this perforation with the rubber dam on or off and I think to myself, maybe I'm gonna to have to take this, this rubber dam off. Um, I might have been able to keep the rubber dam on if I'd done multi-quadrant um, isolation, but usually with root canal, I just do single, uh, single tooth isolation just because it's easier. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm just gonna whip off this, this rubber dam. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna place a wedge guard in between the two teeth. And sometimes you can use this wedge guard as a kind of a matrix, especially if the um, the perforation is small enough. But I can see here that there's still a little bit of bleeding. The, 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 the interface between the wedge and the tooth probably isn't as tight as I'd like it to be. And once I've given it a bit of a clean out and wash out, I can still see tissue there. So I, so I know that that, that is not, um, tight up against the, the tooth and I'm obviously not going to be able to put a nice um, restoration against that. So I have got no choice but to remove the uh, the existing restoration. And sometimes what I like to do is when I, um, when I want to remove the filling, I am going to just cut just down the sides and undermine the filling and then use a kind of a, a flat plastic just to try and flick the, uh, the, the the restoration out that's been undermined and what this does is it, it stops you from drilling further onto the tooth so it, it kind of preserves tooth tissue and that's that's really important in this case because you don't want to drill the tooth too much because it's already been drilled um, in, 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 a, in, a, in a poor place essentially so I have removed the filling and I think now I'm gonna to need to use some kind of matrix. In this case, I'm gonna use a paladent sectional matrix, and I'm gonna use the extra deep uh, matrix. Um, once I have placed it in position, I am just having a little feel around here for any sort of tough tissue, and I can't feel anything obvious. So that makes me feel a bit better. Give it a bit of a wash. And once I've washed it all away, I can see that now there is a nice tight margin on that sectional matrix. And I am ready to just do a little bit of deep marginal elevation. I've not put the ring on the paladent just yet because I just want to get the, um, just get a little bit of flow just right where the perforation is. Sometimes when you put the, uh, the, 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 the ring on, it can kind of open up the contact between the two teeth and then the, 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 the sort of, interface between the 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 tooth and the sectal matrix uh, is widened apart and then it's gone it's it can be really really tough as well to etch and bond down here especially washing the etch out so i have to be really really careful about washing all the etch away before we bond and then nice little bit of uh, flow down here i suppose in this case i've probably put a little bit too much of flow on that i'd like to but there's always room for improvement and learning. And now I'm gonna put the ring on. Notice I haven't um, used a um, uh, rubber dam in this case. Yeah, I suppose there's an argument to say you need rubber dam, but um, and I just think the flow of the appointments, I'm, I'm kind of just happy with the, uh, the moisture control in this case. So you'll also notice that I haven't accessed the tooth at all yet. 
I have just filled the tooth from top to bottom all the way. And I have done this deliberately because sometimes when you've when you've got an access tooth it can be difficult to kind of get the the the, the distal box in and and not fill the 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 the, 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 the canal orifices and what i've done really is just fill the tooth from top to bottom and then i'm going to access the tooth do an endodontic access in the traditional sense so i've rubber dammed up give it a little bit of extra polish and now i am just going to access the tooth like like you would normally um you know, I suppose would would I would I always do this? I suppose with a with a multi rooted tooth, I, I probably wouldn't. I I probably have enough latitude there or enough space for me to see and put the put put the temporary filling in. But I think in this case, um, I find it's just easier just to fill the the the, fill, uh, the the tooth completely. And I felt the little bit of a drop, and I can feel that there's a, a very very small exposure of the pulp horn. And I am using a ultrasonic tip here just to give it a bit of a clean out and we can see here that I have exposed one of the canal orifices but we'll see later that actually there's a dentin bridge between the these 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 two orifices and actually this is one of the pull pawns so now I'm going to use one of these blunt ended uh, access burrs and these are fantastic because as soon as you open up the pulp chamber you can place this burr in place and it's not going to cut at the end it's just going to remove uh, the, 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 the pulp chamber roof and then the final 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 little bit of preparation is a high energy ultrasonic just to remove that dentin bridge and um, as we can see here the tooth's got a nice nice big filling in it it's all nicely sealed and ready to go with the root canal Are you okay? listen I really really like making these videos if you really really like watching them please please like and really importantly subscribe and if you have any comments criticisms or any questions at all please please comment in the section below and I will see you in the next video bye bye